This episode of The Couch is proudly supported by Cafe Bella Vista Restaurant and Pizzeria. Azito, give it a go with Azito. Refresh Pure Water. And Reading Cinemas, experience the difference. Hello Australia, welcome to another Big Couch coming your way today. Episode 484, check out what's on the show today. Oh, can't wait. Movies with Cameron Lynch are coming in. We're looking at the brand new ones that are out. Some good ones, some not so good. Alex Kearns has got a new book. We'll talk to her today. Can't wait. We've also got Jennifer Gilson coming in to talk style, as she always does. And later on, Paul and Clay are in to talk music as well. And we've got a big show. So I hope you can stay with us all around Australia, all around New Zealand, and now for the people watching online as well. It's episode 484. It starts now. It's showtime on the couch. Big show, hope you can stay with us for the next hour and later on, later on we're actually going to talk to these people that are performing on the show, opening song, it's called Happy and they are 5 to Midnight, here they are. You might seem crazy what I'm about to say Sunshine, she's here, you can take a break by the way There you go, they're called Five to Midnight and we'll be talking to Reese and Leah later on in the show, so stay tuned and hopefully if we get time they'll perform for us at the end of the show as well. Cameron Lynch, 
Welcome back. That would be me. Hello. And I got the name right because we, yes. we were recording a, an episode of Bitchin a while ago and, right. I, and I keep getting Cameron Kippen confused with Cameron Lynch. Well, you know, I'm not wearing the stockings and or the, the high heel different. pants. Yes, so um, I'm not wearing the stockings or the high heels, but, you know, I think you can that really, really. Because yes. <laughs> you probably have just That's lost in my the next viewer. segment, sorry. <laughs> Lynch in heels. Uh, yes. You've got some great movies. We today. have a great movie. A, what is it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, one we've got, we've got, yeah, th two out of three ain't bad. We got, we got one, and then we got one that's not so great, and then we got okay. a good one. So we'll start off with the one that's, it's, it's fifty fifty. It's a million ways to die in the West. It's the latest offering from a uh, uh, one Mr. Seth MacFarlane, which is people know from the Silver Screen, mm -hmm. at a, oh, a Silver Screen Triumph, Triumph known as Ted, um, and also his TV shows such as The Family Guy and American Dad, which is a Family Guy two and Cleveland Show, which is Family Guy three point um, But you can tell I'm a huge fan already. Basically, he plays a, uh, a sheep herder or farmer in 1882 in Arizona. Um, he basically loses the love of his life played by Amanda Seyfried. Uh, a woman named Charlie's, a, a woman played by, sorry, Charlie's Theron comes into his life and sort of gets him into mm. sort of becoming br a brave person again. I think because uh, uh, Amanda okay. Seyfried's character left him because he was a bit of a coward. Of course so. she's from Mamma Mia, isn't she? Uh, yes, I believe so. Yes. She was um, one of the girls. Yeah, so um, it's, it hasn't been reviewed yet, but for some reason, uh, or at least on Rotten Tomatoes, but for some reason there are some audience reviews. I know I'm getting the wrap up, but I'm going to mm. extend this one because yep. the next one I'm not going okay. to talk about at all. But basically, um, <laughs> the, audience re the audience reviews have basically said, the audience reviews have been really divided. They're saying it's a bit sad that um, they're utilising someone as good as Neil Patrick Harris in like a poo-poo song or a fart joke or something like that. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, they say if you love Ted and if you love the family guy it's great for me the, the premise itself is flawed because his character as you'll see in the promo realizes there's a million ways to die in the west but what is he comparing this to as opposed mm. to having i'm pretty sure there's more ways to die now like whoever died of uh viagra viagra overdose in the west or you know dropping an ipad into a bathtub can I'm you sure die viagra overdose? i'm pretty sure you can yes yes, yes yes I, I, you haven't been reading well, the thailand right papers recently but anyway um but i, I for me there aren't any thailand papers anymore yeah <laughs> that's a good point um yeah at the moment there are well, at the mm. time of this recording. Uh, this is the weird thing about Seth MacFarlane. I love him. I think he's a talented individual. Mm. I hate his products. And I think he's smart okay. enough to go, I think he's smart enough to know, I don't need to work hard to make a lot of money. Okay. And this is a great example of it. It doesn't look great production value either. It plays to its audience. I'm sure people will love it. I might get a laugh or two out of it. Liam Neeson's in it, which is great. So I'll let you be the judge. A million ways to die in the West. Oh, hey, look, it's the ice. Why is it so big? So it doesn't melt. It's actually really interesting how they do it. It's this one company out in Boston that... Oh! Oh! That went south so fast! Oh! The American West is a terrible place in time. Everything out here that's not you wants to kill you. Angry, drunk people. Hungry animals. Outlaws. Oh, the doctor. I couldn't save her. She had a splinter. Doc, what the hell were you supposed to do? I would like to welcome a new member to our community. Welcome to our awesome town. What's with this fair? Every year, people die. Really? Everybody hold still. People die at the fair. People die at the fair. Somebody in this town is going to die. Please don't shoot us on sex night. You beat this guy at a gunfight, you're going to be a real hero. He's the most vicious gunfighter in the territory. I'm going to teach you how to shoot. Start. Dude, you really shouldn't drink in horse. Ah! Aim up. Get ready, I'm about to shoot a full load at your can. Shut up. Million ways to die in the West. Maybe the frontier is not so bad after all. Hey, it's a sweet young couple. Can I interest you folks in a miracle cure? <laughs> Holy sh! It freak out, dude. Just because the language is totally uh, relevant to the time. Uh, that's out at the end of uh, May on the 29th. So I am actually, as much as it sounds like I'm poo-pooing on this, I do want to see it because I'm interested to see what he can do. The views are blended. Yes, the views are blended. Nice segue mm. into a, uh, a horrible mouth. Adam taste. Sandler, eh? So, Blended's a movie. It's got Adam Sandler in it. It's got Drew Barrymore in it. It doesn't matter. Is it romantic? It, yeah, it's like... Oh. Does it have children? Oh, it hurts my brain. Does it have all the same characters? Go watch... Uh, uh, instead of watching this movie, 
go watch an Adam Sandler you like again, because it's pretty much the same thing, um, and, and watch some shots of Terry Crews in it, because Terry Crews is in it. Oh, and Shaq, if you're a Shaquille O'Neal fan. Let's have a look. I'm not wasting my time. <laughs> my name is Jim. I'm Lauren. Got you buffalo shrimp with a sauce on the side. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh. Who makes sauce this hot? OK, you're going to call me in 10 minutes so that I can tell him I have an emergency. Hello? An avalanche in our backyard. I'll be home right away. It's an emergency. Ah. I'm trying my best. Garbage twisties? I, I don't know. I don't... You're awful. I have two wonderful men in my life, Brendan and Tyler. T-shirt's on fire! <laughs> Look at that. Africa. Sun, sand, safaris. My boys would give anything to go on a vacation like this. No more dating for me. It's time and money I should be spending with my kids. Time for spring break. You're gonna leave me hanging? Boom. Hello, everybody! This is pretty cool, Mom. What the? What is he doing here? Is this a sick dream? Do I have a new mommy? Isn't this place fantastic? So romantic. We are not dating. My mom is friggin' hot. Ew. No, not hot. That's just wrong. This is so pretty. Wow. Oh. We're out of gas. What? Start running fast. Run. Get those legs going. She's a kitty cat. No, he's a good daddy. He's a bad daddy. He makes it look like a walking dead. Blended, eh? The views are out on that one. Yeah, anyway, moving on. Edge of Tomorrow is uh, Tom Cruise is in the new uh, action blockbuster movie. He plays a, uh, a private named Private Cage uh, in a massive war against aliens who are looking to uh, take over the Earth. Uh, basically, what happens is he dies. Spoilers, I'm sorry. Um, you'll be able to tell from the promo anyway. And then he's brought back to life to sort of relive um, mm. the war over and over again. Um, and uh, Are you over Tom Cruise? Honestly? No, I think he's a great actor. People, people, people vilify him because he is mental, mm. um, and he lo he's a Scientologist, and he acts a bit crazy and stuff like that. But look at uh, Collateral. Look at um, basically the Minority Report and this movie as well. Like, and uh, Vanilla Sky is a fantastic film that he's mm. a great actor, and okay. so he's a great actor for his age. He's probably one of the hardest working men in Hollywood. I think Fair he's enough. great. Um, this movie, you look at the trailer and you go, oh yeah, same old Tom, Tom Cruise, Jack Reacher, mm. whatever, um, Oblivion, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But it actually, apparently, people are saying this is the summer Hollywood blockbuster. Oh, wow. okay. um, they're saying it's really, really good. Um, so check it out. This is uh, Edge of Tomorrow. <laughs> I was say Edge of Oblivion. Edge of Tomorrow. I'm going to tell you a story. At first, it's going to sound ridiculous. But the longer I talk... We have to find the keys. The more rational it's going to appear. I can't believe you found coffee. Sugar, right? Yeah. Hold on. Three. You like three. How many times have we been here? How many times? For me, it's been an eternity. This is not the end. The invasion will fail. We lose everything. This is not the end. I die within five minutes of landing on that beach, along with every other soldier. How did you do that? Come on! Come find me when you wake up! You do know what's happening to me. What happened to you happened to me. You hijacked their power. How do I control it? You have to die. Ah! Every day. Keep coming here and I'll train you. Again, again. Your leg's broken. No, I'm good. Then we better start over. Oh, come on. They want to conquer the rest of the world. Unless you change the outcome. OK. 
you're not equipped for what's out there. How many times have we been here? What are you not telling me? Edge of, Edge of Tomorrow. Tomorrow. I got the name right this time. It is uh, out on the 5th of June, so make sure you check it out. It, like they said, the Hollywood blockbuster rating around the 90% of Rotten Tomatoes at the moment. Beautiful. Keep an eye on it. Yes. Let's have a look at the top fives for this week, and we'll have a look at the top five movies in Australia. In number five. Australia, number five, The Grand Budapest Hotel. Number four. Chef. Number three. The Other Woman. At number two. Bad Neighbours. Everybody needs bad neighbours. And at number one all around Australia, this is the movie everyone's watching. Godzilla! I'm going to go and watch Godzilla. it on Tuesday. It's very good. And uh, in New Zealand, number five. Once again, Grand Budapest Hotel. Number four. The Other Human. Number three. Chef. At number two. Looking familiar, Bad Neighbours. And in New Zealand, number one movie that everybody's watching. Godzilla. 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 Thank you very much. Just quickly before we get a break, you want to have yes, a wrap 30 uh, seconds? X-Men Days of Future Past. Went and checked that out la uh, last week. Yes, uh, it is very good. Uh, it. A lot of people are saying it is the best X-Men film of the, of the uh, franchise. Number seven. Um, and basically a lot of action. I had a friend who's a massive fan of the source material, the comic which is, uh, this arc is related mm -hmm. on. Um, and he, he's, he wasn't critical of it. He said it's actually very good. It does to task. It basically negates everything that happened in the third movie. So mm -hmm. if you like me and hated that one, you'll love this film. So uh, yeah, make sure you check Check it out. 91% are on tomatoes at the moment. X-Men Days of Future Past. Thank you, Cameron. Uh, we're talking music after the break. We need to go straight out to a break. We'll see Cameron next week. Thank you very much for being here. My pleasure. See you after the break. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. This episode of The Couch is proudly supported by Cafe Bella Vista Restaurant and Pizzeria. Azito. Give it a go with Azito. Refresh Pure Water. And Reading Cinemas. Experience the difference. Welcome back to The Couch on Aurora Television around Australia and Face TV in New Zealand. And of course, don't forget, you can watch us online now live on a Sunday night, or sometimes before if you're lucky. Now, these two people are back together. They've been sick for a while, but they're back uh, to do music. And we've got Clayton and Paula. You got shocked there for a minute. You weren't <laughs> separated. <laughs> I hey. saw Clayton go, <laughs> how did he know about that? I know everything. I do my research. Yes. Welcome back, guys. It's nice to see you fit Good and healthier. Good to be back. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having Paula us again. Paula and uh, Clay, of course. Husband and wife. Husband, yeah. This are week we, we are. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we Good. still are. Still together. Yes. <laughs> Lovely. What Excellent. have we got today, guys? Because you've got a whole heap of stuff you want we to do. We have. So the first today. part is um, Queen. I have announced that they're going to be doing their Australian tour. Queen? Queen. The real Queen. The real, no, not the Queen not of the England. Queen. Oh, Queen, the, the band. Queen, the band that was led by Freddie Mercury. Are you serious? Yeah. The actual real he's Queen, that's what I meant. Queen, not Queen Elizabeth. Yeah. <laughs> no, but he's not. Um, so what they've done is they've found a new lead singer, and it's Adam Lambert. And if you watched Austral mm. uh, Australian Idol, American Idol in yeah. 2009, he won that. So Adam is Lambert. Is he good? He's amazing. Not according to him, but... <laughs> no. I, don't, I don't think he's Freddie Mercury good. No, no. one's Freddie Mercury but, good, yeah, well, but no. no. He's Adam got Lambert's the chops, got like. the chops. So apparently he has the same vocal range as, Ad, um, as Freddie Mercury. So, you know, he's going to be I remember when Noiseworks brought in a different yes. person and then In Excess tried it. Exactly. Uh, they kind work. of all do it and they all sort mm. of fade away. But yeah. I think this is just going to okay. be their last tour that they're going to do. When's that going to happen? That's going to happen later on this year in October. Beautiful. Yeah. Sounds good. I'm going to look forward to that. I like Queen. We love Queen. Mm. Your turn. Speaking of rock and roll legends. <laughs> <laughs> My turn. Your okay. turn. <laughs> the Eagles. Welcome have to the Hotel California. <laughs> Absolutely free. We right. love that yep. one. Songs like Hotel California, Take It Easy, you know, Tequila, Tequila Sunrise, Sunrise, you know, New Kid in Town. I like the Eagles. They've I love released the Eagles. their Australian New Zealand tour. They'll be in Perth, Melbourne, Brisbane, Sydney. Sydney. Um, they're doing Auckland, Wellington, Christchurch. Everything. All wow. over the broad. Um, awesome. Horizon, June 10th, the, the tickets go out on and sale. sale. They're Get good, two legends, Queen and the Eagles. Yeah, good. absolutely. So some really good gigs coming up. What about John Farnham? Is he coming back for the next? I wish. Time? I love Jeez, I John so. Farnham. Please, love John Farnham. I love him. Because I'm so waiting for a comeback. <laughs> yeah, his 100th comeback. Yes, absolutely. Oh, yeah. So we've got a bit of gossip. So if you haven't been paying attention, there's been Queen Bee and her husband, Jay-Z, Jay and her sister, Solange. They had a scrap. In the elevator. In the lift. In the in the lift. lift. Yeah. She kicked him in the... <laughs> kicked him everywhere. She kicked him in the stuff. So they all yes. entered the elevator with their big, huge bouncer, and then you just see Solange going crazy. What was that about? Crazy. Well, wow. there's, there's rumours oh. around. Oh, you know it all. Go yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Our so thing is... You, you tell them one rumour, Well, okay, so one rumor. of the rumours is that um, Jay-Z's 
been having extramarital affair. affairs with Rihanna. He's been screwing around with Rihanna? With Rihanna. Playing with her Under umbrella. umbrella. Under <laughs> <laughs> the umbrella. Oh, you had to throw that in, didn't you? Can you do it in a Rihanna one? In the um well, umbrella. Under the umbrella. Ella. 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 I hope she didn't sit on it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Because that would be more painful than Jay-Z cheating. And then the other rumour The other rumour is, is not so funny, actually. Mm. The rumour is that oh, he's no. been putting his hands on her. And, so and Solange you heard physical violence. Yeah. Physical physical violence. And so Solange had heard that. Um, well, I hope that's the true rumour because he yeah. deserved the kick in the nuts. Yeah, yeah exactly. Mm. You know, don't Good. mess, obviously, yeah. don't mess with a sister. That's what it all comes That's down terrible, to. That's terrible, eh? It's, it is. It's, it's, There's yeah, no excuse for violence. I hope he hasn't done that. I mean, it's only alleg it's only alleged. Exactly. At the moment. There's a couple of other things like um, they've been they've been having marital, marital problems. problems for a long time, but they don't want to divorce because divorce would be way too expensive. It's probably messy for the careers as well. Right? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, that, they have a net worth of nine hundred million dollars. If they were to get a divorce, it would be a one really? billion Do you have dollar their phone divorce. Number? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I exactly. Only want one of those nine hundred. So it's better for them now. to stay together. But yep. if it's like domestic violence, you don't really want to be in that Beautiful. type of situation. What's happening with the Marindas? <gasps> oh, we love them. Our girls have been. They're on tour they're on at the tour. moment. They were on the couch last week. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. They were wonderful. They got the brand new song out. Yes. And, and so what they've Sydney. done is they're touring that song, and they're over in Sydney at the moment. Yep. And where are they off to next? Melbourne. Melbourne. So, yeah, Instead you can check out their Facebook page and see where they're um, performing their shows. And just quickly, going to give, have we got something on Jason Ayres? Jason Ayres. So, local talent Jason Ayres has been opening for lots of bands. So, he's open for John Stevens, James Rain, Hot Chocolate, and he's just been announced to open for Rick Springfield at the Crown Theatre here in Perth. Fantastic. Absolutely. Thank you. Let's have a look at the top fives for this week. You guys have done wonderfully today. At number five, let's have a look at the top five hits for Australia. Sing by Ed Sheeran. Number four. Hey, by Zhu. Number three. Geronimo by Shepard. Geronimo. Number two. <laughs> Problem by Ariana Grande. And Iggy number Azalea. One. Number hey, one. Sarah song. by Justice Crew. Beautiful. I think that's it. We've got top five albums as well, haven't we? Top five number albums. Number five, The Australia. Very Best by NXS. Number four. Frozen soundtrack. Number three, Escape by Michael Jackson. And number two. To Be Loved by Michael Bublé. And at number one. We have Turn Blue. You have to. By the to, Black Keys. Because Jay-Z's <laughs> friend kicked you as well. Thank you very much to Paula <laughs> and to Clay. Us. Thanks to have, Thanks being for here. We'll us. see you in a couple of weeks. Absolutely. Keep watching The Voice. Have you loved it? Actually, I haven't been watching Good. it properly. <laughs> Do you want to know why? Yeah, tell me. <laughs> I want to know. I Go was prepared for this question this week. We are like, okay. Bedford's going to ask about The Voice. What, what are you going to say? I haven't been watching say? it because I've been a bit disheartened. A lot of it's the sob Crap. story. Oh, right. Mm. The, top, the sob mm. story. And it's become more about the judges and not the actual singers. So oh. I want to hear the voices. I don't want to hear what really? Ricky Martin ate for breakfast and stuff. Oh, well. Well, you know what? I don't reckon it's as popular as it was last year. It's starting mm. to lose its popularity. It's too many it's of these It's never as popular shows. as the first series. I no, and you, you're not in it anymore. So <laughs> that's probably the other problem. Thank yeah, you very much it. to Clay. To thank you very much to Paula. Thank we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Now it gives me great pleasure to welcome one of my best friends on the couch. She used to do a fantastic segment. Houndstooth a Studio is where she's from. And the creative director is back again, Alex Kearns. Hi, Fred. How and you happy going? birthday for a very belated... Four zero. Uh, yeah. Anyway, you still yeah. look good. <laughs> Forty's young. I know. What you been doing? Oh, I've been working really hard in the studio. I thought you were going to say I've been a Bali. <laughs> no, no. I did go away for my birthday, which was lovely. But been working, working on uh, getting the book out and and doing some PR for the book. For those people who don't know what Hounds a Tooth a Studio is all about, tell us what you do quickly. I photograph pets and animals and wildlife in a studio, so mm -hmm. people can bring their pets in and have pictures. And they're kind of magazine quality style photographs. I was asked by someone, I wasn't going to ask you this because I didn't want to cut into your book time. Do people ever want to do kinky stuff? I don't mean with animals. I don't, don't mean that. I mean, do you, ever get, do you ever get people that come in with their pets and say, can you photograph us behind our pets and like naked or anything like that? Have you ever had something weird? I've always wanted to ask you. Uh, Has anything ever weird been asked of you? No. <laughs> I don't think... Well, I don't, I'll get my friend yeah. to call you. What's your no. I don't think we kind of attract it or really are really that open to it, I guess, to be honest. <laughs> well, I do have a cat I wanted to bring in, but yeah, if you're not open to I that sort of thing... You've got a lifetime what? ban, but no, I'd love to meet your cat. But <laughs> Well, at least she's always got the business angle. So can people bring any sort of pet to you? Yeah, anything though, anything at all. And you've got anything. your own studios yes, in located. Yep. Have you ever had someone from over east say, look, I, I really love what you do. 
can I, how do we get to you? Can they come over? Yeah, I've had people fly over from a lot from um, up north in the Pilbara. Beautiful. And people from Melbourne and, and Adelaide. And I travel a bit as well to other states. So okay. Yeah, I can sort well, you've, out. you've got a brand new book. It's called Mother Knows Best. And I bet you do know because you're the mum of all these pets. I know. Tell me about the book, how you got to writing it. Well, I was working with Penguin Books, who's the publisher, on a cover shot, a cover picture for a book, and mm. uh, said to them, you know, if you ever would like to do an animal book, please keep me in mind. And a few weeks later, they gave me a call and away we went. It looks awesome. Can I just say, I have never seen the book, okay? And I yep. know you, I know it's going to be great. Oh, you've got to love that photo. Can I get a picture of that? Look at that. It's good advice. Clean your teeth before bedtime. <laughs> I, love the, I love the pictures. Have you taken all the pictures in this yes. book? Yes, yes. Incredible, hey. Now, those people who don't know Alex, Alex has come from a public service background. She was a policewoman. Uh, you worked in customs and all that sort of thing, and you've gone to becoming a photographer. And you are an amazing photographer. You capture the pets. Oh, thank you. So well. And you've put together a book. Now, is the book, because I know there's always an angle of charity to you, mm -hmm. where do the funds go for the book? Are you helping anyone this time around? Well, this one, generally, the funds are, are coming to us, but we use... Pay for the book. Yeah, but we use, you know, all the profit we have pretty much does recycle back into to doing the philanthropy for animals. So it's in the pool there to go and do, we're doing a few things with Free the Bears later on this year, projects in Tassie with Tasmanian Devil. So it, it just... And that's why I say that, because I know that you help so many charities. Yeah. And I really want people for Mother's Day, Christmas, get it in Birthdays. now, buy it now. Yeah, it's perfect for anything. To be now, honest. how much is the book selling for? Nineteen ninety-five and nineteen ninety-nine, nineteen ninety-five. You should have spoken to me. We would have had a little <laughs> bit of markup. Nineteen ninety-five yeah. for this. Yeah, and it's available at places like all good book retailers, Target, Big W, Dimex, Meyer. It's cheap. I know it's cheap for, for the quality. It's I fantastic. just like the pictures. I think the pictures, the animal <laughs> pictures. I just think they're amazing. The color, they're all color. They're all color pics. I mean, I can't flick through the whole book easily. There you go, we'll try to flick through. There you go, now you don't have to buy the book anymore. <laughs> no, no, look, fa tell me how you got to writing the book again. Like, why did you decide to go with the book? Well, Penguin came and said, let's do a book on baby animals. I said, okay. And I thought it should have some text, you know, it needs some quotes to go with it. So I said to them, do you mind if I write some quotes? And I'll open to it. And as I was writing them, it just started coming out things that mum say. So mm. I was writing all these quotes and they're coming out like rules, like eat your veggies and be kind to your siblings. And I thought, oh. The pets are like kids, they aren't are, they? People pretty love much. their animals. They're people's fur babies. So I contacted my editor at Penguin and said, it's standing like something mums would say. So we then went, oh, how about mothers and baby animals? So we kind of you know, targeted towards that and, and went with that. So it's worked out really well. It's fantastic. How long did it take you to do the book? Well, it's probably photographs from my archives probably for the last five years that we went through. Um, writing the quotes and stuff took a little bit of time. But yeah, just going through the pictures and working out which ones fit and which ones don't. Give us your website again. www.houndstoothstudio, or one word, .com .au. Now, if you miss that uh, website, you can always go to our website, which is, of course, thecouch.com.au. That's thecouch.com.au. It's on screen right now. Alex, is there anything else that you guys are doing at uh, Houndstooth that you want to promote coming up in the next few months? Yeah, we're off to Taronga in about two weeks to do some things at Taronga Zoo for Free the Bears and then Adelaide at Adelaide Zoo for Free the Bears and yeah, a whole lot of charity stuff. Best place is follow us on Facebook or check us out on the web. Nineteen ninety five for the book. Get it now. It is, of course, Mother Knows Best. I'll hold it up so you can see the name. It's got that beautiful goldy font Shiny. and it is a beautiful book a wonderful read great for pet lovers great for people who just want to give a beautiful book and it's yeah. not that hard to read it's very nice actually easy it's got a big to read font. <laughs> and I, I would probably have a block of chocolate and a hot coffee <laughs> Perfect. and read the book wonderful on this winter's day as well thank great. you very much nice to see you You're on the welcome. couch thank nice you kiss for you Mwah. that's alex thank coons you. from hounds two studios and this is the couch we'll be back uh, we need to go to a break because we're running out of time oh thank you adrian um, if you haven't caught the details i've had a Follow us because we're online now. Every week the show is live online. If you haven't caught on how to do that, check this out. If you're looking for more info on anything you've seen on today's show, head to thecouch.com.au. It's where you'll find all the links for our guests, plus clips from the show, backstage photos, and even exclusive movie reviews. You can also sign up as a couchie and be part of our competitions, including Spin It to Win It. New Zealand viewers, that's open to you too. So jump online and check it out now thecouch.com.au Living in Australia, we all love to go out into the outback. We love going camping and we love to surround ourselves around rivers and bushes and forests and we all go walking these days, except for me, of course. But uh, most of society uh, still go out and do their beautiful bushwalks. And today, I thought we'd bring in someone that knows all about outback survival and his name is Mike House. He's part of Bob Cooper's Outback Survival Organisation. Welcome to the couch. Mike. Thanks very much, Fred. 
Now, Mike, you're a senior instructor. You are the senior instructor with Bob Cooper, aren't you? Yes, that's right, Fred. So what does a senior instructor do? Well, look, we take care of training our other instructors, but also oversight of the courses that we run. And to get to that level, you've got to have done some solo work out in the outback. So what's your background? My background, I grew up in the bush and spent a lot of time with my father in the bush as a very young man and then with Aboriginal people from the southwest and basically learned a lot about nature and the way it connects with us and with everything around us. Have you been on both sides of the fence where something's happened to you, a disaster or a tragedy or you've got sick or you got bitten by a snake? Sure, Have yeah. Had I've, I've had three life-threatening situations, one on a yacht, uh, one suspended in a waterfall in Vietnam where I seriously thought I was going to die and the other one was actually pinned underwater uh, after a, coming out of a kayak in, on the Avon River just oh, here in Perth. You've passed the test of senior instructor. <laughs> what are we talking about today? Because, I mean, outback survival is such a broad topic. It is, what, yeah. what would you like to talk about today? Look, I think the psychology of dealing with the unexpected, Fred, it's part of what we weave into our courses is mm. how, do you, how do you deal with it when something unexpected happens to you? And that's the essence of a survival situation. The camping trip that you've talked about has gone off the plan. You've got mm. bogged or the vehicle's broken down or there's unplanned for weather and now you've got to deal with that set of circumstances. And how we actually do that, well, the, the kind of thinking that we do and the planning that we do that will help us prevent that from coming a tragedy, we often talk about mishaps become tragedies because people react rather than act. Uh, some of the best things that we can do in that sort of circumstance is you get that initial emotional rush, and I'm sure you, like any human, mm. has experienced fight or flight, that rush of heat and... The, panic. Yeah, panic, the panic exactly. panic sets in. Yeah. Because I, I was just reading, it's funny you say that, last night I watched a movie called All Is Lost. Right. I don't know if you've seen it. No, I did But a guy it. that's on a, a yacht, oh, and it, yes. it gets hit on Redford. the side by a container, mm. and I, I said, oh my God, what would you do in the middle of the ocean? None of his, pow his power's gone out, he's got no yes. communications, Yes. and he's got a huge hole on the side of the yacht, and he's got a, uh, he had fiberglass there. And I, mm. So obviously it's a survival kit that people carry. Yes. Are you finding that more Australians or more people around the world are becoming more alert to the needs to, to be thinking about what happens if there's a disaster or they get bitten, or do you think they're still vague? Look, I think there's, people like Bear Grylls, for example, has done a lot to raise the profile of, of survival and preparedness around the place. Mm. And with also lots of Australians being involved in things like tsunamis in Asia and earthquakes and other things mm. around the place, the events in Christchurch a few years ago, I think there's a growing awareness that if, if things go off the plan, then we do have to have a sense of resilience and a, an ability to deal with it ourselves. What are the common things, uh, Mike, mm. that people seem to run into? when they're, they're, Say in general, what are yeah. some of the main things that you come up in your courses? So in the outdoors, I think there's been a little over 50 deaths in Australia in the last 25 years, which mm. is quite a lot in the outback, usually from dehydration and exposure. And those deaths typically start with just somebody got bogged and then they've headed into that reactive territory and they've usually left the vehicle. Often the vehicles are really well resourced. So all it is is a bogged vehicle and they've turned that mishap into a tragedy by running or leaving the vehicle. There's a lot of assumptions. We all make assumptions about we'll find water, we'll, we'll find, find help. Yes. And because you're leaving in a reactive state, there's no plan. So some of those people have thought, people that have survived and told the story have, have had plans where they've thought that they're going to be able to cover 30 kilometres in three hours, which is mm. 10 kilometres an hour. Mm. It's crazy. Mm. You're not going to do that You're not on going your to feet. Do it. Not unless you've sort of had some sort of elite training. So are you guys running courses? Yes. Is that how, how it works? So if I'm interested in, in learning a bit more about outback survival yes. and also the values of, of taking care of ourselves and planning yes. ahead, how do people do that? Can they come down and see you? Do they go online? How do we do it? Certainly. So uh, all of our courses are advertised on our website, Fred, and the website's www.bobcoopersurvival.com. And there's a list of courses there that happen locally here in Perth, but do also in other parts of Australia. Do you know some of the courses that people can take? Yeah, so we run a, our introductory course is a three-day course, mm -hmm. or it starts Friday evening and goes Saturday, Sunday. Over the weekend. Yep, and that's basically just a bit about the mindset and then some practical skills training as well. It's, it's more than 50% of the course is hands-on. And then if people enjoy that and want to get more advanced training, we do a, a week-long course in the Pilbara where we get a, a fair bit more advanced in the kinds of scenarios that we throw at people. 
and obviously the cost for the courses, what do they mm. range from? So the, that introductory course is $650 okay. a head and includes Bob's Mark III survival kit. And does it include food over the weekend? Yes, it does, yeah. Really? So oh, a lot okay. of people think that... What weekend are you doing? <laughs> Also, if you can survive my eating, that will be a survival <laughs> hint in itself. So there's, everything's included, basically. Yes, it can be it a lot is. of fun as well, isn't it? It is. So it's it's not fun. open just to people who are going out camping or going out in the bush. It's to people who just want to be prepared. That's right. Something's going to happen to you in life. Yep. And seven minutes is not a long time to talk about it here on the show. I know we don't have enough time today. Sure. To, you know, It's a very short time. But I just want to go talk about the book as well because yes, Bob's, Bob's got a wonderful book. He Tell has, us, yeah. And I wish I'd brought it in today because I've got about four of them at home. Yes. I, I always get people to read them when they come over, yes. just surviving my cooking. <laughs> but it covers so many things. It's not it just does, outback yeah. survival. I mean, we talk about snakes. We talk about insect bites. We talk about making water, if that's the word, or collecting yes. water off trees, yeah. um, starting a fire to keep warm. Uh, keeping warm in the elements, yes. uh, surviving rain if you've got no cover. Yes. Uh, there's just so many things. And, and I think, and I'm pretty sure in the last budget, we haven't yet cut back on <laughs> outback survival. That's probably the only thing that hasn't that been hasn't got been rid trimmed. of. And Australians still love to go camping. Yes. The book, where can people get that from? So the book's available via the website and also in good bookstores. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it covers, as you say, a lot of very, very practical information around survival. It's essentially a survival manual. It, we talk about five priorities, which are water, warmth, shelter, signals and food. Mm -hmm. If you look after those things, then you can do a good job of extending your survival. And are you guys still offering the survival kit? Yes. Uh, because yes, there's about a million things in the survival kit, <laughs> I believe. And, and Bob's created it, and it's a fantastic yes. thing. I, I, you can talk about it for hours. It is so nice to have you here today. Give us the website again if people want more information. So the website, www.bobcoopersurvival.com. And you can meet Mike, he's the senior instructor there at Bob Cooper's Survival, Outback Survival. And, and, I, and like I say, I urge people to give him a call. And, and can I just say too, having been on 6PR, we did have Bob on there and we spoke about people that have a sight impairment. Mm -hmm. There are courses for people with, with disabilities as well. So please don't rule yourself out. Give them a call. It's worth giving them a call because they might be able to help you. Thank you very much, Mike. Thanks for having me on the couch today. It's always nice to talk survival. And uh, I think we survived that interview quite well. We need to take a break here on the couch. Be back with more of the couch right after this. This episode of The Couch is proudly supported by Cafe Bella Vista Restaurant and Pizzeria. Azito, give it a go with Azito. Refresh Pure Water. And Reading Cinemas. Experience the difference. Welcome back to the couch here on Aurora Television. Had a nice little break there, had a bit of a coffee break. Read uh, Alex Kuhn's book as well. Now it's time for us to talk style because I need a lot of help. And with us back fresh from a holiday in Bali is our very good stylist and fashion expert, Jennifer Gilson. She's got a great guest. Thank you, Fred. Now, my guest today is Catherine Corgan, makeup artist extraordinaire. Lovely to have you on the show today, Catherine. Thanks, Jen. Now, when we're little, little girls usually, mm -hmm. we go into our mum's makeup boxes and we start applying the makeup and playing around. And then we become teenagers and we start to learn from each other on how to apply makeup, influenced by magazines and the media. Mm -hmm. Then what happens when we get to about our 20s? Who influences then and who helps us? So at that point, what is the biggest issue that faces women? Look, I think, you know, as you get older, the biggest, the biggest issues that us women face is the comparison. Um, we're always comparing ourselves to other women. Um, women that are, you know, in these unrealistic images or photoshopped images in the media. It's, it, you know, it's, it's really, really tough for women today, I think. Um, you know, how can we self-love if we're completely and constantly comparing ourselves to other women? that, you know, are unrealistic images that are seen everywhere. So it's completely unrealistic of what mm. is expected of us. So in working with a woman, a client, when she comes to you, what is she coming for? She's coming for a personalised lesson. She's coming to learn all about her own features, where we go through a set, a process where she can learn the skills to enhance who, you know, who she is, not mask who she is. So, you know, we look at, you know, the features that she loves about herself and, you know, how do I actually bring those out even more? And, uh, and, and that's what I teach women. 
So it sounds like you're doing a little bit more than, say, just putting makeup on or mm. perhaps what a, a person would get if they were going to a makeup counter. Yes, absolutely. Look, you know, I believe that when you go to a makeup counter, um, for the most part, you're being sold a product. Now, generally, it's a trend, a seasonal trend. Um, so it's not necessarily tailored to your face. So that, I think, is where the biggest difficulty is. You know, we all bring products home from makeup counters and you know, we try to use it at home and think, oh, I don't know if this actually works for me. You know, is this, you know, is this actually enhancing who I already am? So what I do is I reverse it. Let's look at you, let's look at your features, and now let's go and find the products that will, you know, bring that out even more. So you're actually looking at their best assets and highlighting those rather than saying, well, this is the latest colour, must have foundation yes. or whatever it is that's in trend at that time. Absolutely. Mm. And how does a woman feel once you've worked with her? Like, have you got an example of a client where she had a really great change in mindset and started to actually love herself? Absolutely. Yeah, I did. I had one client that um, she... She really was down on herself. She didn't like the way she looked. She felt really, um, she didn't feel like a woman. She felt quite incomplete. So we sat down together and we looked at her features, who, you know, who she was. Um, she couldn't look at herself in the mirror for longer than, you know, a, a minute. She really didn't, she just did not connect with her outer image. So I sat down with her and I showed her um, some skills in how to enhance who she already is and the features she already has. And, uh, and by the end of the session, she was dancing in front of the mirror. She oh, couldn't that's stop fantastic. looking at herself. So that was great. <laughs> that's, you know, that's a real, she walked out of the door just feeling so confident. And she now has the tools that, you know, she can now go and do this any day that she chooses. And often it's changing from the outer so that we can change within. Because I know in um, image consulting that we go from, I tell my clients, from body bashing to body loving. So yeah. you're also doing the same thing, just yeah. using makeup as a tool to do that with. Yep. Yeah. That's right. So then what does a client go on to do then once they've had this transformation? What can they do? Yes. Well, look, they can, you know, they can use this whenever they want to. Um, they can try different looks. They might have the confidence once they actually know how to apply makeup, and it might just be a basic one, just a, an every day. Um, you know, they, they'll have the confidence to to do that. They then can actually keep, you know, notching that up. So let's try a different look. You know, maybe I can actually rock a red lipstick. You know, where, whereas I never had the confidence to do that before. So. It just depends on, on how they want to use it. You know, what, you know, they might be giving a presentation. So they want to feel a particular way and present in a certain way. Um, you know, it could be their wedding day. You know, that everyone wants to feel like themselves on their wedding day. They don't want to look like someone else. So how do we actually, you know, how do we emotionally connect with that and, and then portray that, you know, face our partner on our wedding day and, and them actually recognise that. That's beautiful, Ken. I got, <laughs> I got tears in my eyes just thinking about that. So basically what you're doing is working with who a person is. Absolutely. Their personality, not just the latest looks, the latest colours mm. that have come out, mm. and actively encouraging the women to take that step forward and start wearing a lipstick that might be a little bit brighter or Absolutely. an eyeshadow that's a little bit of a different colour. Yeah, something a bit fun, you know? And it's and, and not so, you know, in a, in a magazine, not everyone can wear what, you know, what a, a woman is, is wearing in a magazine. So let's just actually focus on you. What, you know, who are you? What do you look like? Let's now play with that. And let's, you know, let's extend that even further. So what is the greatest benefit of working with Catherine Corgan? Well, the greatest benefit is that, um, you know, I make women look and feel confident, beautiful and captivating every single day that they choose to, to look and feel confident, beautiful and captivating. So, you know, they, I, sh I teach them the skills to do that as well. So if they choose to, they know how to do that. And, um, and, and I think that's the greatest benefit that, you know, the, the experience and the, and the know-how to do that. And I can't think of any woman out there who wouldn't want that. Absolutely. All of those things that you've said there. Yeah. Now, yeah. I believe you also have an offer for one of our lucky viewers today. I do. I do have an offer. Um, so I'm offering um, a lucky viewer a, um, 
a personalised makeup lesson. So all they have to do is visit my website, which is katherinecolgan.com, and click on the contact page and, you know, hopefully they'll be the lucky winner. And then you'll contact them from there. Absolutely. Fantastic. So Fred, if you would like some beautiful red bootylicious lips for your next segment, you know where to go. <laughs> and also next week, we will be drawing the lucky winner for our $2,000 makeover, which is ever so exciting. So any more information you would like, you can go to thecouch.com.au and it's back to you, Fred. Thank you very much, Jenny. I was just gonna say to Catherine, we've got something in common, Catherine. What's that? You and I both make women look good. <laughs> they look at me. So we do it in different ways. And can I also ask you just quickly, I know we're getting to break, yeah. but do you get men that now wear makeup? Like I'm wearing makeup yes. for the show. Do you get a lot of men? Because I've noticed men like to wear makeup going out now. They do. And actually, really funny you say that, mm. but even on wedding days mm. for for women, the, you know, the father of the bride will actually say to me, look, I've got this sunspot or whatever it might be. Do you think you can, you know, cover this up? It's a changing up? world. So it is a changing world. So there you go, men. If you want some more, some help as well with Catherine, I'm sure she'll be happy to give you some help as well. Absolutely. Well done, guys. Thank you very much. And Jenny, you said it. We'll be back next week to give you the name of the winner for our fantastic makeover competition. Thanks to our great sponsors for that as well. Catherine's one of those too. We need to take a break, be back with more of The, the Couch after this. We talk to a couple of band members. See you then. This episode of The Couch is proudly supported by Cafe Bella Vista Restaurant and Pizzeria. Azito, give it a go with Azito. Refresh Pure Water. And Reading Cinemas, experience the difference. Welcome back to The Couch here on Aurora Television around Australia and Face TV in New Zealand. And don't forget, we're now online. You can watch this whole episode. Well, if you're watching it already, you already know. But tell all your friends we're online now, thecouch.com.au. Now, we've had a fantastic band called Five to Midnight perform the opening song called Happy. And we're still in that mood at the end of the show. We're coming up rapidly to the end. But Lauren is back and Lauren's going to talk to the guys from the band. Then they're going to perform for us. Over to you, Lauren. Thanks, Fred. And here today on the couch, I have Leah and Reese. Welcome to the couch, guys. Hi, Thank Lauren. you. And these guys are from Five to Midnight, as Fred's just said before, that beautiful song, Happy. Thanks for doing that. Um, no now, tell me a little bit about Five to Midnight. Well, Five to Midnight is um, one of Perth's newest party bands on the scene um, within Perth. And, um, yeah, basically the band is uh, a party band that caters to a whole multitude of different events, be it birthday functions, weddings, uh, parties, uh, large-scale corporate events. Okay, cool. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, uh, yeah. yeah. A very unique band on the market. I think we like to offer something a little bit different, so. Yeah, so yeah. what kind of styles do you do? We do jazz, so kind of dinner music, and then all the way through to soul and funk and top 40, so Beyonce. You know, and then Ella Fitzgerald, so we can yeah. really offer a really diverse range of music. Great, so mm. you um, offer the kind of background music, jazzy styles, while mm. people are talking, dinner kind of events to yeah. the really getting people up on the dance floor and jiving with you and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, so you can see exactly, us do some jazz yeah. um, later on in the show actually, we'll be performing Feeling Good, um, made famous by Michael Bublé and Nina Simone, so yeah, it shows okay. our different, different styles. Beautiful, mm. beautiful. So um, how many people are in the band and who, who, who's in the band? Well, um, our full lineup um, has five people, and all five musicians are well. Uh, we've got Leah on vocals, of course, um, myself on keys, and then we've got Todd Byram Carter on guitar, uh, Rowan Nelson on bass, and also uh, Chris Markand on drums. Mm -hmm. uh, but we don't necessarily always perform with the full five piece lineup mm -hmm. because it depends on what the client is looking mm -hmm. for. They might want a four piece band or even a three-piece band. So. And we're all Wapa trained yeah. graduates, so from the West Australian so. Academy of Performing Arts. Beautiful. So we've really had a lot of practical experience and we, we know what the client wants and what we can what can, we can offer. So. Great, yeah. great. Yeah. Um, so what are your contact details? How can our viewers get book you? Well, we have a Facebook page, so yeah. 5 to midnight dot band. so if you type that in, you can like our page. Um, and we also, also have an email. Yeah, yeah um, our email address is 5 to midnight. oh, sorry, uh, yeah, 5 to, 5 to midnight dot band at gmail.com. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being on the couch. All the no best worries. in thank the future. You. Oh, thank you, Lauren. And back to you, Fred.
Thank you, Lauren. It was a very quick interview, but we had to do it that way because we're right out of time. Five to Midnight's the band, and they had the details there. We will have them on our website as well. Thank you for watching today. Just before we go spin it to win it, we're going to bring it back in a couple of weeks' time. If you don't know how to enter, this is how you do it. If you'd like to be a contestant on Spin It to Win It, all you have to do is head to thecouch.com.au, sign up as a couchy, and you'll be automatically registered to play. That website again, thecouch.com.au. There you to go. You, Fred. There you go. Thank you very much. And that's how you enter. And we'll be back in a couple of weeks. We got cleaned out a couple of weeks ago. All the prizes went with one of our local viewers here in Perth. Now, thank you very much. I need to say thank you to our relatives from Malaysia for being here today. We can't take a quick shot of them because the cameras are the other way. But uh, I will say hello to them on the promo. There you go. OK, thank you for watching. Thank you, Australia. Thank you, New Zealand. We're going to go out today with Five to Midnight, beautiful song called Feeling Good. I'm feeling good, feeling tired. Bye-bye. Flying high, you know how I feel. Sun in the sky, you know how I feel. Breeze drifting on by, you know how I feel. It's a new dawn. It's a new day, it's a new life for me, and I'm feeling
This episode of The Couch is proudly supported by Cafe Bella Vista Restaurant and Pizzeria. Azito, give it a go with Azito. Refresh Pure Water. And Reading Cinemas, experience the difference.